nothing says cozy, home cooking, comfort, uh, love, like roasting a chicken in your own home and sitting down and chatting with your daughter, your mom, your aunt, your sister, your friend, your grandmother, um, just chatting about life and enjoying a nice roast chicken. To me, that's the quintessential comfort uh, and language of love. <laughs> so that's why I started my YouTube channel, Let's Chat and Cook a Chicken. That was the main reason why. And I think we all could use that sort of love and comfort and chat uh, on a regular basis. I'm gonna show you how to make today Nigella's one pot lemon roasted chicken with orzo. Uh, so yummy, so delicious, you're gonna love it. The smell in your home is gonna be amazing and uh, it's just gonna set the tone to have the nice chat with whoever you're serving it to. I wanted to christen our new, very old main kitchen with of course a lot of chicken recipes. That's what I've been doing sort of since we got here. And I know I've been absent from my YouTube and I feel terrible about that. Uh, it, it actually bothers me, it's been two months, but if I tell you between buying this old house from Miami up here, you know, not being in Maine to buy it, going through that process, packing, moving, driving, helping my daughter drive cross country, my husband driving the trailer up with my truck. It's been a lot and unpacking and um, setting up the house and, and getting ready for winter. It's been a lot and I love every minute of it, but I'm really behind on my YouTube and I feel guilty about it. But I decided rather than wait and keep, and keep mounting pressure of making it about the move to Maine, I'm just gonna launch back into my regular weekly um, episodes where I just cook and chat with you because it's a lot easier at this point. And um, I'm also taking this YouTube class with um, Lisa, Farmhouse on Boone. Oh, this is fantastic. I love her. And what I learned is that I started my YouTube channel about last spring, this past spring, about maybe six or eight months ago. And I never really introduced you to why I'm doing it or who I am. So I'm, I'm gonna start doing that in episodes a little bit more about my reasoning. But today I just wanna say why. So you'll know why I'm doing this. <laughs> because some people I think think I'm a little nuts, I think. But it doesn't really matter because I'm happy doing it. So do what you love, do what makes you happy. And, and, and beyond that, it, I think People reach out to me and it, and it helps them because, you know, who, who doesn't need a little company comfort and learn how to make a nice recipe together and talk about life? We all need it, I think. So maybe me more than any of you. <laughs> so you keep me company too. Um, anywho, uh, in last year, it hasn't even been a year yet, it's been almost a year, I was on a Netflix cooking show I loved every second, every minute, the whole journey of getting ready to, like applying for the show, that took months. And that the whole process was very interesting, making videos, getting interviewed, doing essays, learning about my style of cooking and why I cook, and kind of like a self-exploration in a way. I loved it. I loved the whole process, but I mostly loved, as we got towards the end of the interview application process, we had to make our own videos, which I really never did a lot of cooking videos, talking to the camera, telling you what you're making and why, and showing your personality. We had to do several of those, um, and I actually really loved it, and I, I think I have a little knack for it. But anyway, through that process, and then being selected to be on that show, and then being on the show, it brought me a lot of joy. It was really exciting, really fun chart. It fed me. It fed me my creativity. It fed my creative soul, let's put it that way, and my need to cook and share and teach. So for all those reasons, I said, you know what, after that, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel and keep this party going. And even though I didn't really know what I was doing at all, and um, I started listening to these podcasts and they said, you know, you'll have this idea and you're passionate about it, but you could spend months, years, longer, 
and stall out because you say, oh, why should I do it? How can I do it? What do I do? What do I say? Everyone's doing it. There's no space for me. It's too much money. It costs too much. I don't have the right equipment. I don't, you know, all these things and you'll never do it. It will, it will immobilize you. So that happened to me too for a couple of months. I was like making these videos, but I wasn't launching them and I thought, oh, they're not really good. And then Lisa on Farmhouse on Boone and other podcasts I listened to, especially Mel Robbins, said, just do it. (laughs) So I woke up one day and I decided to turn the camera on and I just started talking. I just started doing it. And yes, I'm on my iPhone. I don't have lights. I don't have the right mic. But you know what? It's working. And it's getting me into the journey, which I'm loving, and each day, each episode, I get to the next level, and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm sharing some valuable information with you, and some good recipes, and we're talking about life, and that's helping, and you watched my 75 hard um, journey, and so it's really anything that's happening in life, our struggles, and trying to make life a little bit easier, more delicious, and finding the joy in sort of mundane. People call it mundane. I happen to love the little things in life. That's what I get most joy out of. So that's me. That's my why. That's my YouTube channel. Let's chat and cook a chicken. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you come every week or every other week when I have an episode, and I hope you'll keep coming back, and I hope you'll subscribe and share with your friends. Um, And so today I'm going to show you now uh, how to do Nigella's one pot chicken with orzo. Enjoy it. I like to start with a, a five and a half to six pound chicken. I pat it dry. Then I cut up my vegetables. In this case, I have a nice purple turnip that I got at the Stonington Farmer's Market, some fresh carrots, and you'll notice I'm cutting it. I I like a rustic, chunky cut. So I start the carrot, I make my diagonal cut, I give it a quarter turn, I cut another quarter turn, I cut, quarter turn, cut, quarter turn, cut. I think it gives it sort of a a country French rustic look, which I love. Then my onions, I just simply peel and quarter. And my potatoes, again, rustic, and I like to leave the skin on so I get more nutrients and fiber. And just another chunky cut, making sure that all your vegetables are about similar in size so that they cook evenly. That's really the most important thing. Get zest of a lemon. That's gonna give this whole dish, the chicken and the orzo, a nice brightness. You're going to put medium-high heat, your oil. Oh, I put about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. Get it nice and hot. Flip your bird breast side down. Don't wiggle it. Stop wiggling, Sue. Stop touching the bird. (laughs) Um, I know, I break my rules all the time. I like to just make sure that the skin has full contact with that hot oil because what you're looking to do here is sear it for about three to five minutes. You see that? Until you get that nice golden crispy look and then flip your bird right side up. That's how it's gonna cook in the oven. You're going to put your bird into a 350 degree preheated oven. But first, once you've flipped your bird, you're going to then put your lemon zest all around. That's gonna flavor the, the jus that you're making the broth. You put your lemon juice in. I think I used two lemons here, but I'll put that in the recipe. Then scatter your vegetables all around the bird. So you see I have a large Dutch oven, which I love. You're gonna need a cast iron or Dutch oven pot that is large enough to house your bird as well as hold these vegetables around the side so it's not too crowded. Oh gosh, there's my favorite. You don't have to use the spice, but I love that flat iron. Uh, This one, I use the smoky. I think I use the smoky or the sweet heat. Uh, I'll double check that, but salt, pepper, poultry spices go in at this point. All your aromatics, your flavorings that you want to use, and I'll put in the description what I used. Nigella called for just water at this point, I think six cups. 
Uh, but I'm putting in, uh, I put it about two thirds of the way up the bird and I chose to use chicken broth to give it even more of a full chicken flavor. So you see, I stopped the liquid, whatever that amount is, it might not be six cups, just go about two thirds of the way up. And what you wanna do is with the lid off, get this whole chicken and its broth and vegetables to a boil before you're gonna put it into the oven. just to really start the cooking process. Look at how nice that skin already looks. Ollie smells it, my, my cooking companion. He's always by my feet, just, that's Maggie's cute dog, Ollie, just like my old dog, Lily was. Okay, lid on into 350 degree preheated oven for an hour and 15 minutes and let the stove do the magic. Pull it out after an hour and 15 minutes you're gonna put in 300 grams of orzo. God, I love orzo. So take out, after an hour and 15 minutes, take out your casserole pot, your Dutch oven. Take out your Dutch oven, and this is where you're going to add, it looks great already, you're gonna add the orzo just carefully around the edges, where the vegetables are, and you're gonna to want to take a, a spoon or a fork or whatever, and you're gonna to wanna to poke the orzo down into the cooking liquid, just to make sure it has contact um, and, it, and it's gonna cook well. Put the lid back on. Sue, put the lid back on. <laughs> put the lid back, there you go. Lid back on, back in the oven for about 15 minutes. Ollie can't wait. Okay, 15 minutes is up, and now you wanna check the orzo. Oh, I, at the same time, I should have said, I was also roasting some of those extra vegetables that did not fit into the pan, because some people like roasted and crispy vegetables as opposed to sort of softer vegetables, so I have both. Now check your orzo, it looks good, and at this point, it's not quite done cooking, uh, you're going to leave it out for another 15 minutes so that orzo really gets soft and swollen. You'll see the change in the texture of it so that it's really soft and yummy. See how full it is now after sitting out for another 15 minutes? Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God, if this doesn't scream comfort, nurturing, love, deliciousness, I really don't know what does. Let's chat and cook a chicken is just, you know, what I like to do with my time, my loved ones, my friends. Um, this is really how I show love. And um, at the end here, you see all that green. That's parsley, fresh Italian parsley. And I put about two to three tablespoons in at the very end uh, for a nice fresh flavor. I serve it up like that. I think it's nicer to have the orzo in the bowl separately, show off the vegetables, and there you have it. Enjoy.